Uh, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, my name is Vanessa Lacey, and I've been a local painter in Kansas City for the last 11 years. And I have an art gallery in the Livestock Exchange Building, which is my namesake, Vanessa Lacey Gallery. And in October, it will have been open a year. And it's been quite the learning experience. Um, and you'll see me talking quite a bit about um, you know, how <laughs> that's come to be. My painting process consists of me palette knife painting on wood panels, and it's always about light, more, the, more so than the subject matter of cityscapes, Kansas City landmarks, and street scenes. Um, a lot of dusk and dawn and things that make people feel peaceful and at ease, and I like to meditate upon that time of day while I paint. I also like to go take my RV out to national parks and nearby areas where I'm away from the city and my gallery and all the stressors of life, and I can just concentrate on painting and be in nature. I also enjoy plein air painting competitions here in the city. So one of my favorite ones is the Brush Creek Art Walk, which is coming up. I encourage you all to either participate or go check it out. My gallery is located in the historic Livestock Exchange building where I've been painting for about five or six years. The community is incredible, and I see a lot of people from the building in the audience. Thanks for coming. I love it there. Um, the building owner is extremely supportive of the artists, and he provides lower rent um, for more unfinished units in the building for artists. We have 40 artist studios in the building, and now I have my gallery on the first floor near the back door. I show my own work and sell my work there, and we do group exhibitions. So um, we put out calls on call for entry. We have guest ju judges, and we jury in art along with my own. On top of the gallery, I also participate in art fairs and painting competitions, like the plein air painting competitions we have here in the city. Last year, I was fortunate enough to have a really large commission from KU Med. So 11 of my paintings went into Cambridge Tower A, the newest building for KU Med, and it was excellent because it taught me how to manage a large project. It helped me with my studio routine in one of my first years of being self-employed as an artist, and it financially supported me in the gallery during our first year in operation. The village, I have to say that being an artist would not be worth it if it weren't for my village, and I've cultivated these beautiful people in my life who encourage me to continue painting, who mentor me when I have new things I want to try out, and um, just make it worthwhile. Sharing your passion with other people is an incredible part of being an artist. And I started cultivating that community in the arts incubator when I had a studio residency there back in 2009. And I have lifelong friends from that experience. Um, and also, I was a fellow at Artist Inc. in 2013 which kind of turned me on to art fairs because my small group mentor, Chris Dahlquist, did art fairs. Someone else in my group, uh, Brad Altkin, did art fairs. And basically, it's a networking, but they, t it, they give you business advice, but the most valuable part of it was the networking, for sure, for me. Um, as far as marketing goes, my three main streams are art fairs, where I can stick out an email newsletter sign-up sheet and maybe get 50 people decide to follow me based on that art fair. I'm taking advantage of all the marketing efforts that these art fairs have already put forth, and it, it's excellent. I send out a newsletter every other week through MailChimp. I update my website with the help of my interns and employees. And I post on social media nearly every day what I'm doing in the studio or what is going on at the gallery. So my goals, for me personally, I would like to attend some artist residencies in national parks. I'm inspired by nature. I need that restful area to kind of get me to paint more and be away from things sometimes that distract me from painting. I would like to attend at least three more art fairs a year to help financially support me and the gallery. Uh, yeah, this is a silly thing. Everybody wants to be comfortable when they retire, right? Why not artists too? I'm just trying my goal right now, only being two years self-employed, is just to fully fund my Roth IRA every year. Um, and corporate commissions. That was such a help you know, for me financially and um, as a boost to my art career to have that KU Med commission, and I would love to do more things like that. 
So how do I get the attention of those decision makers? That's something I'm trying to figure out. For the gallery, same issue. How do I attract the attention of art buyers to support the gallery and the artists showing in the gallery? How do I do my job as a gallery owner better? I'd like to develop my own artist residency in the Livestock Exchange Building because community has been such an important part to my art career, I would like to have a platform to introduce the youngest, brightest, hardest working young artists, bring them into my existing art community in the Livestock Building, provide them with studio space and mentorship, and in exchange they can help me man the gallery and at the end of their residency, they can have a show of their work that they made during the residency. And this is something that's in development right now. Um, also, I would like to help build up the Stockyards District as a destination for people to come enjoy art, music, food. We have a lot of restaurants. The brewery in the building has sponsored me with beer every month since we've opened. And it's this beautiful culture that a lot of the city is unaware exists. And how can I bring people in, support my neighbors and my own business at the same time. Challenges, delegating gallery tasks. I'm a little bit of a control freak sometimes. I don't want to hand off some of my more important tasks to young 20-some year olds who are my interns because I'm scared sometimes they're not going to do the best job. But I've had people sit me down and say, Vanessa, <laughs> you can't do everything and be everything. You need to delegate and compartmentalize, and so that's something I personally am working on. I do have two interns from UMKC who come in and help me with the website, etc. And then I have a few volunteers that come in from the livestock building, some artists who help me out. But just doing more of that. We have a yoga event specifically for artists on the last Saturday um, of every month that my friend who's a painter and a yogi teaches that helps stretch muscles that get tight when you're painting and helps clear your mind to put you in a cre good creative space to make art. And there's so many artists in this community that could use that and they're not coming, so how do I bring awareness to that? Um, and some things I've already talked about, acquiring corporate commissions and things like that, bringing in art collectors. So needs are, of course, volunteers and interns that I can delegate to, how do I market to my target audience? And from what I've seen from art fairs and sales at the gallery, it's usually suburbanites who have larger homes and larger budgets to fill their homes and offices with my work and the work that I show. What can I do to get more of their attention, more of those people coming to my openings? Don't get me wrong, I love artists and their friends coming to openings and you know having a beer and supporting each other, but at the same time, financially, I need art buyers to come in, and how do I get those people's attention? Um, and as, like I've said before several times, just those art buyers and corporate commissions, what do I got to do? What marketing tasks am I not already doing that I can add in to gain that, the attention of those people? And I encourage you to sign up for the newsletter on my website, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. The gallery and my own personal art painting Social media are kind of separate, so you can follow both or one, whichever you find more fascinating. <laughs> but thank you so much. I feel very privileged and grateful to be here. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, my name is Leslie. I actually work in case resourcement, so that's part of what we do is getting people connected to the right resources. One of the things I heard you say is that you're trying to figure out how to kind of um, get to the corporate um, people to get your opinions. Um, one suggestion I would have, you can always take a look at our calendar and I have information, but it's to kind of um, see if you can get people to have your work featured at after hour events, coffee connects, things where they may have opportunity to look at while other people are doing work and that are in business, maybe get connected with some local chambers, um, you know, for some of their events because that gives you that direct connection um, to the corporate kind of community as well. So I can say, I, I can give you my information, I can email you some okay. resources for you to start off with. Excellent, thank you. Uh, have you approached any businesses about doing their um, gallery rotation or such on a, on a monthly basis or by monthly basis? I have done um, Arts Casey's Now Showing program and that was really successful, especially at Waddell and Reed. I had a pretty good experience um, and every business is different as far as what 
you know, if you're going to sell anything there or not. The Northland Gallery is very good about, um, Paper Birch is very good about zoning in on people within the Northland and in their immediate community and um, offering them gallery um, curation. So, and so she has yearly contracts with them to fill up their space with artists. Something to look into, thank you so yeah. much. So here's a question that I'm sort of confused to consider. Um, I, I love how you felt as an artist. It's been very impressed. Are you ever tempted to expand the range of your painting into other than plain air? Um, Maybe sometimes capturing something more abstract or figurative, or I'm just wondering if that would be. <clears throat> you're a very distinctive style. I love the work you're doing now. Mm -hmm. But that might be a way to expand the range of your custom base yeah. if it's something you enjoy doing. Yes. Because I certainly don't want you doing something. <coughs> Absolutely. So I've been painting Kansas City landmarks because it was an easy way for me to connect with people and people like to buy art that makes them feel more connected to things that are important to them like their community and their city. Um, everyone has a story for a landmark and so I kind of got stuck there for a while. Not that I'm stuck, but I have, I'm mainly interested in light and color theory and creating a mood that is a beautiful thing to bring into your home. So that's why I do dusk, dawn, etc. But it's always been these really familiar things like landmarks that people love. But there's other familiar subject matter that's not landmarks and city scenes, um, such as like my great grandma helped me collect fireflies, put them in a mason jar, and put them in my parents' backyard with a sunset and a cornfield, and I painted that. And as soon as I put it on Facebook, everyone from back home was like, oh my God got to have a print of that, got to buy that. Um, and so I would like to do more things that center upon family, childhood, connecting people to that deeper inner peace that they have. Um, so I, when I did an art fair in Colorado, I was worried that Kansas City landmarks, of course, may not sell there. However, I did see a ton of people in Kansas City when I was in Vail on vacation, probably could have sold them there. <laughs> But um, I did, you know, national park scenes and I did campfires. And campfires, everyone loves a campfire and I love camping. And so I've been taking a lot of pictures of campfires and um, my RV at night with lights on it. And when I was in Arkansas Hot Spring National Park, I was going around like a creeper at night with my <laughs> camera, um, a long exposure taking photos of um, just string lights on RVs and, and things like that, that I think make people feel warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm trying to do this winter in hopes that that will help get me into more national art fairs like the Plaza, like you know Cherry Creek, et cetera, that would help support me financially and also broaden my market. So that is on the horizon, Paul, and I hope that, that we can get to that. It's going to take some delegating so I can focus. But <laughs> yes. I've got kind of a twofold question. Yeah. So uh, I'd like you to talk about how you curate the shows in the gallery, and then maybe a little bit about the gallery's philosophy in terms of how, how does it relate to plein painting in your work, or you know, what's the relationship between, between those two things? Excellent question. So I'm new to this. I'm still in my first year of being a gallery owner, having had zero experience with it previous, outside of you know, putting up my school's art show when I was a teacher dealing with 500 some students hanging their work. <laughs> uh, everybody got in, <laughs> but it's not like that anymore. I don't have an entire school. I don't have 500 students. I have a very tiny gallery with very limited wall space. And to organize the whole deal, I've been using call for entry, which is costly. You know, people don't realize it's $350 a call plus $2 for every person who applies. And some people, that I think knew me before were a little judgmental that I was asking for application fees to help cover that cost. And I know not most people get it, but some people are like, mm, I don't know. You know. And so it's been this issue of just keeping them really low 
you know, $10 to apply. And then um, we've been ended up getting way more applications than what we have space for. And that's been really difficult. It will, I mean, the last show we had between six and 700 applications and we only, t um, for individual pieces of artwork, and we probably only took 24 pieces of art. And it took us all day. Sometimes it's just me. Sometimes I invite a guest juror. It's like back in November, one of my, um, I'd like him to be my mentor, Tom Corbin, and every time I ask him for help, he is there. And he ju juried a show. We were very new, and I would say that the applications were not numerous and not quality at that time, and we weren't using call for entry yet, so it wasn't nationally getting attention like call for entry does. And mainly, I was just scared off of the cost of call for entry. Um, so I was using entry thingy and it was very burdensome and hard to use. And before that I was just using email and I, it was very difficult to keep track of it all. So now I'm using call for entry. It's very streamlined. I love using it as a gallery owner. It's, people are familiar with it. It's easy to apply. Um, and so last month I had my friend and studio mate who I met at the art incubator I was talking about, uh, Teresa Magel juried our last show. She chose a lot of pieces I would not have chosen because they spoke to her in some sort of way. And it's a really strong, beautiful show, I feel like. And we have a lot of large pieces. Um, and I did bring uh, Ben Park's piece and my piece on Casey Live a couple weeks ago. And so we're trying really hard to public, you know, market this to get people to know we're there. It's not like we have excellent foot traffic. We have some, but there's a lot of people that just never go to that part of the city, would never know we exist. So I'm trying really hard to, to bring awareness to the gallery. Um, and I'm gonna have, and, well, we have two more open calls out right now. One is for the small work show in December, which I'm insanely doing via email because I don't want people shipping in their work all over the country like they have been doing. I only wanna deal with local people doing small pieces and they have to hand deliver them for the small work show in December. And then um, in February, I have Teresa Dirks is actually gonna jury that show. I love Teresa Dirks' work. I love the positivity and um, the vibes of wonderful goodness that it radiates. And, I, and so I titled the show Capturing Bliss. And I thought, who better to jury that show than Teresa Dirks? So she's gonna be our guest juror for the February show. Um, so that's kind of how that works. Did I answer all of it pretty good? Yeah, and as far as a mission statement, I shied away from that because I, I wanted it to evolve slowly um, because you can set out to do something and then it, it changes. And so it's evolved and it's grown and basically what I have come to see it as is I have this platform where I can show people's work, I can support musicians at the openings, we always hire live music from local people. Um, and I'm, in a way, I'm a little bit of a gatekeeper because um, there's so many people that have shown in my gallery that have never shown in another gallery before, and I'm able to kind of bring them in and be a little bit of a help in a way. Okay, anyone um, have any insight on the possibly more community involvement with Gallery Bill? Okay, awesome. Hi, um, great presentations. Um, with the community involvement and also developing the district as kind of a destination, have you looked into the citywide events? Like I, I know Open Spaces is coming up, well, starting this weekend, um, to get like involvement in those kind of big events citywide so that not necessarily that they'll get just exposure for that event, but they'll get exposure that, hey, something's happening, you know, in this building, in this district that we can go to later or Absolutely. And I was going to let Teresa cover this because it's a little bit more of her baby. So when I opened the gallery, I was kind of overwhelmed and I would hear about these things and I'm like, I'm just trying to get through next month. <laughs> but we are on the open spaces schedule as a field partner. Expanded field. Expanded field. So our open studio event is on their calendar for October 12th and 13th. So my, the gallery show where I'm showing everyone's work in the building and also you can visit their studios, that's part of open spaces. And I am gonna go to their opening on party on Friday and hopefully meet some people that can also point me in the right direction. Uh, yeah, that's an excellent thing. And if there's just more opportunities like that, I would love to know about them and participate in them. 
Thank you for that. Susan. I know from judging for our peers um, in the application process and viewing, we not only viewed the art, but we viewed the tent setup, and that was considered a major um, part of, of the application and why um, we were choosing some artists and not others. Uh, anywhere from it wasn't organized enough to where it looked too much like a mall store. Does anyone else have any input into um, things to consider when applying for art fairs? Henry? <laughs> <laughs> I've talked to Heinrich about this I a little bit. some great shows. <laughs> um, honestly, the, um, the time we can't, sitting on a chair, trying to create this here, you can have probably eight to 10 seconds looking at a slide. Um, the last slide is a roof shot, and all honesty, if your word that shows out first is not on par, I, you know, the show is still gonna look at roofs like. Um, things not to do is have it to clutter, things that you probably already know. There's a lot of um, templates that are out there, digital artists putting their artwork on a, um, a digital background. Uh, hopefully you're not doing that. Um, things you probably already know, and coming back to Paul's point, I honestly do want to say, make the work that you want to make. Do not make work specific to a location. <laughs> the last thing you want to do is fall into the same trap of making work that you think is going to be specific to a location. Make the work you want to make, I think that applies to like, you know, all of this, so. Yeah, sure. Like uh, Henrik said, there is a lot of guesswork, and I, I, I recall too, um, you know, we're not getting any background on previous artists that were in the show, and we ended up, um, the organizer ended up putting in a jury artist that we didn't pick, because she sold out her booth last time, and, and so, so too, it is, it is kind of a shot in the dark sometimes when you go before a jury, uh, and sometimes they pick um, not knowing the background of the artist or how that artist sells, which I think is crucial to. Does anyone have any suggestions on the delegating part? Um, just even from an administrative, uh, if you're strong in administrative skills or whether or not having, you know, there's a kind of a catch-22 to having interns, you know, as, as Vanessa mentioned, being helpful, but, but the trust factor and the quality of work, um, any insight or experience in administration? Thank you. Well, this may be just really obvious, but um, making sure that you give clear instructions and then follow up. Don't, don't just give something to someone and then come back too late in the game and say, well, that's not what I meant. That's not. Absolutely. That's I pretty mean, obvious. Yeah. Would you recommend maybe like a weekly check in with them? Or yeah. I guess I'm always there when they're there. But, but, they, but people don't always ask questions. They don't, yeah. And I know in the beginning we didn't have enough structure because I was a brand new business with the gallery and I didn't even know what I wanted to do. So it took some time and I know my first employee really wanted a lot more structure than what I was capable of giving her at the time. And so I kind of feel like now with these interns we really do have, after having had 10 or 11 shows, we really have it under our belt like what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. So hopefully we can get that going better. <laughs> I've recently been more delegating, and one thing I realized um, over the summer was that the way that I've learned to be better at what I do, of course, when I'm new to are the mistakes I've made. So I kind of had to let go and let um, a couple of people I have doing things for me, working for me, let them make some mistakes. And I just kind of think, okay, my, my main priority is making my work. Yes. And so as long as I'm doing that, and yes, that wasn't perfect or that wasn't exactly what I wanted, they're learning and they're, they're getting better too. So it, it, kind of keeping that in their sleeve is helpful, I think. And I'm so going to go. I've heard this same advice from a business consultant in the livestock building. 
Um, he said, well, where's your income coming from? Is it the gallery? And I say, no. <laughs> he says, well, then does it have to be run perfectly or should you be more focused on your painting? And I'm like, oh, yeah, the painting. But um, so for me, mentally, just letting go of the gallery and focusing on the painting was a challenge at times. And I'm getting better at it. Um, and it might sound silly, but just meditating for two minutes before you paint or going for a jog and taking care of your body so that you can mentally be there and not be stressed out and be productive has been extremely, extremely important. Can't <laughs> say that enough. Thank yeah. you so much. And thank you, everyone, for asking your questions and, and giving advice as well with Vanessa. We have one final question that we'd like to ask as a community. What is it that we can do to help you further your art? Well, I would say just keep being the amazing tribe that you are. Um, and if you're interested in learning from me, if I have anything to offer you, please just come in and hang out at the gallery. Um, I always just need a warm body in there for one. You can paint in there, come join our yoga class, be part of our tribe, be part of what we're doing. Um, apply to the shows. If uh, $10 is too much for you, you let me know. We have this thing called discount codes. And we just want everyone that, um, to be a part of what we're doing. Yeah, I suppose that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thank you.